Hey guys, I decided to show you something different today. So I was sitting around and trying to come up with what kind of video I wanted to make because I have some time today and I was kind of really exhausting all my notes and looking at questions and stuff and everything just seemed super daunting. So then I was just looking through all the stuff and I thought it would be a really fun idea to just show you guys some of the process from my uh from the hardest project or the most difficult project that i've ever worked on which is what you see right here um it's a graphic novel called grimoire noir i did not write it i was contacted by the writer because she thought my style my art style would suit the project which was true and <laughs> she already had a deal with the publisher and so it's, it is like an official published graphic novel or whatever, but I did not write it myself. I was just the illustrator, so I was basically brought in to the project. Anyways, <laughs> I just wanted to let you guys uh, see some of the process work from the couple of years that I was working on it. I think it took me like maybe two years altogether, which, you know... It's, I guess, not too long looking at this absolutely horrific amount of work. <laughs> and this doesn't even, like, cover it because... Honestly, it was printed in such a small format. That was, like, one of the biggest tragedies of this project, looking back, is that when I was working on it in Photoshop, you wouldn't believe how closely I zoomed in on the details, which were all subsequently lost in the printing but it's okay i mean you know life goes on and such so there were two versions a soft cover and a hard cover and i digress <laughs> so i was looking through my old stuff and i found some stuff that i thought you guys might be interested in seeing so this is the folder where i kept all the, the paperwork ongoing by paperwork i mean how I went about it was basically as soon as I was on board with the project and I was good to go and I've already done like some preliminary stuff with character designs, what I did, the first thing I did was print out the entire script. So I'm a very hands-on person and it's a lot easier for me to make notes by hand and just keep organized with physical papers and things in my notebooks which is why I have like a bullet journal and I basically keep most of my planning on paper and not digitally so I really like to just have the script on hand and be able to flip through it whenever I want so I printed it out and this is how thick the script is <laughs> it's a lot a lot of pages I can't believe <laughs> I, actually, I actually finished this because even looking back on it, it's kind of shocking to me now. Anyways, so the script was already divided into panels, as you can see, by the writer, which was pretty cool of her to do. I didn't always follow... Hold on. Is it divided into panels? I guess it's not, is it? Wait a second. Wait, it's not divided into panels. Why did I think that it was? Maybe there were two different versions. Anyways, the, I mean, the point I was gonna try to make anyways is that it's nice of the writer to think about panels. And I suppose when you're writing a script for a comic, you do kind of have to take panels into consideration. But I personally prefer to panel things out myself, which is why I, th there, there are changes that I made to the page. It's definitely divided by pages, I'm pretty sure. Is it? I don't know. Maybe I was working with two different uh, versions of the script. But anyways, I mean, that's besides the point. I can see that there's some panels here and there. Yeah, so basically I read through the script a couple of times. And then the third time I read through it, I, I would basically circle the first time we see a character. Just so I could keep track of all the characters that pop up. And I would also keep track of the locations and I made some notes on inconsistencies or when I wasn't able to understand what's going on 
etc. So as you can see, some of the notes are like confusing location. This is a new character. Yeah, so this kind of stuff is very important and it, it's like the first thing that I pretty much did. So before you can start, before you can start paneling out or storyboarding the first chapter or storyboarding anything at all, you need to figure out what the geography of the story looks like. I don't recall people talking about this in videos that I've watched about com comics, so I figured that's something that I would talk about a little bit. I didn't put in like an ungodly of work into this or anything, but I did go over some very basic stuff, so I'm gonna show you guys. This is the sketch of the main house. So that's like one of the first thing things that I drew. I drew one of I drew a couple of different versions and I th thank god the writer wasn't like a helicopter, so I I had a lot of freedom in terms of what things look like. What we did, we actually had like a very good relationship when it came to decision making and stuff like that with the visual aspects. She she let me have a ton of freedom and what we put together like the the stuff the things that we converged on basically the area um <laughs> how do i put this basically we had this pinterest board going on and i think she 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 gave me a lot of um reference pictures like mood boards is basically what you could refer those things to uh she she gave me a bunch of photos of different people and locations and moods of what kind of she had in mind for the story and i actually saw that after i put a mood board together myself on pinterest and i showed her the pinterest board that i made and it turns out that we were 100 percent in agreement basically in terms of what we want the the story to feel like or like the visual app basically this was establishing a visual direction basically like art direction so I was pretty much good to go once we established the fact that we're basically on the same page. So she really didn't control my decision making or anything like that and didn't uh, impede my progress anyway, which was awesome. I really liked uh, the collaborative process that we had going on at first and the fact that it was pretty easy going forward afterwards. Anyways, so this is the house that I settled on. So after I made this little sketch, I thought ahead and I went ahead and actually made like a super crude hideous 3D model in SketchUp and this was like the biggest pain in the ass for me because I've honestly never used- I've always hated 3D programs, I'm pretty sure I paid somebody to do my assignments for me at Sheridan, shh, didn't tell anyone <laughs> because I just didn't even want to touch that shit, like I had zero interest in 3D. Um, in retrospect, maybe I could have learned something, but it's it's such a tedious process and I really, really don't like it. So going forward, I honestly, like, I would totally pay somebody to make 3D models of basic locations if I need them for my future comics. I will not do that shit myself because I'm bad at it and I am going to show you guys what the crude model looked like that I constructed. Actually, I can probably do it right now because I have it up on the screen and I'll just need to do this. Ooh. All right, so see what I mean? It's like the super basic, ugly, <laughs> boxy. It's probably wrong too. Like in terms of size, I'm really not sure. Like I didn't think it through. This one, these windows look pretty big, but since it's so basic, it's it's pretty easy to make it look believable in the comic. So what I did essentially was just do my best to find the angle that I need and take a quick screenshot and kind of put that into the roughs of the pages when I was actually working on them. And it really helped to have this on hand to kind of reference it at a glance when I was doing storyboards as well. And as you can see, there's like a little little gazebo attached to it in the back um, that, I also, that was also a location for a couple of the scenes. And there is a car that appeared like once and so I used that as well. So there you go, that was my, my basic setup for uh, what, what happened here. Anyways, so back to the printouts. Mm. Alright, here we go. So, after I did this sketch, I went ahead and made some super crude floor plans. 
<laughs> oh my god this is so funny like i i didn't do any research on like what typical house layouts are like or anything like that i just knew that we aren't even we're not even gonna see most of the house but it was really important for me to know where people's rooms are and where they are in relation to the entrance of the house like where the windows are and stuff because i obviously read through the script a couple of times and some of the stuff kind of mattered and plus it's it's a lot easier to picture it in your head like i honestly kind of approach this a little bit like a filmmaker but obviously not nearly to the same degree of detail but it's all kind of general stuff that i needed to know before storyboarding so i could easily picture what any uh relevant location might look like if i needed to so the majority of what happens or like the majority of what we see in some of the scenes in the living room takes take place like right here so i just wanted to quickly figure out what it's gonna look like and i wanted to have like i knew that the staircase had to be nearby because there was a scene coming up where the mother was coming down the staircase and she needed to be seen by i don't even know if she was described but as coming down the staircase but whatever that was like a thing that it needed to happen so she needed to be in the same frame so i just kind of placed it right there plus it's it's plausible that you know the staircase would be right across from the entrance um and the porch was an important area and of course i had to keep in mind what kind of mood i wanted to give this comic right so in terms of visuals i wanted it to have a certain look anyways and here we have the hallway upstairs and we never see the parents room um but we do see heidi's room and bucky's room so I wanted to give a little layout on that as well and figure out where the windows would be, etc. So that just gives you like a basic idea of the kind of preliminary work that I wanted to do before starting. And I just wanted to let you guys know that this is this was my first project of a large scale and I've never really, I mean, obviously made comics before, but never to this degree of seriousness. So when I made comics previously, I would always just come up with a bunch of shit on the, on the spot. And I didn't have a script that's longer than a single chapter before I started working on anything. So this was completely different. And honestly, it's I would advise anybody who wants to do a comic to have like a lot of things most things figured out before you even start because from my experience working on my own comic before this project i shot myself in the foot in like a million different ways by not planning properly i mean i was young whatever i can't like like i don't blame myself for that it, it needed to happen and it was kind of like a trial run but it was a good learning experience in terms of like trying to write it's not that it's impossible to write things as you go along it's just that you can write yourself into a rut very easily or into like a dead end if you don't plan properly because that's kind of what i did during my first go at making a webcomic and then once the story started developing in my head while i was working on the pages it kind of in like in retrospect some of the stuff that happened in the first several pages was like what like this no longer makes any sense and needs to be changed and it was like it was very tragic because I ended up having to scrap it <laughs> and I'm currently in the process of just rewriting the whole thing. But I'm a lot more careful this time. Anyway, so moving on. Uh, another cool thing that I found that I wanted to show you. I don't know if cool is the right word, but this is the piece of paper that was pinned to pinned on the wall next to my desk for the two years that I was working on this for. Why is it folded? Because my poor heart could not take looking at the whole thing while it was empty so i had to hide it partially in order to spare myself the grief of seeing how much work is still ahead so as you can see these right here are the page numbers and each page has several steps before being complete so here we have thumbnail sketch ink tone color finish and text so i had to fill this tiny little square box for each thing that I finished and usually I would obviously thumbnail one at least one chapter at a time so I would just finish thumbnailing and then be like Shh, and then that would bring me the vast amounts of satisfaction just to see the color 
filling out slowly. And you know what? When I was done, this was absolutely incredible to look at. And you can see how, <laughs> how much the ink from the markers has faded over here in comparison to like the end. Oh God, it took forever. Anyways, I like doing stuff like that. I, it really helps me keep track of my progress and it really boosts my morale. I mean, it kind of does a little bit of both, but it's good to be aware of how much is ahead. But anyways, I'm not gonna get into strategies on how to cope with like crazy workloads in this video. Maybe I'll revisit them that some other time, but yeah so i had this that little piece of paper by my side all the time and how i would go about it is i basically i essentially thumbnailed each chapter ahead of time well well first before doing any actual layouts and my my general process was i would read over the chapter and then take some notes on what characters appear what they're supposed to be wearing the key locations uh in which things take place and oh what else like any sort of important object that might have to appear again is something that i would have to design a little more seriously than just drawing some something random on the spot which you can get away with a lot of the time if the object or location is a one-off and it's not anything important so yeah and you know what there's look <laughs> there's so many little technicalities that you have to take into account like i have to think about like one of the things that was by the way i haven't i haven't mentioned this so far but i am going to talk about some stuff in this video that's going to be kind of spoilery i suppose so if you haven't read the graphic novel maybe don't watch this video and read it first <laughs> it's available i will link it down in the uh, in the description where you can purchase a copy if you wish but anyways that being said i'm just gonna continue talking so one of the biggest points in this um one of the biggest like overarching e plot points or events or whatever that take place is like the gradual flooding of the city or, or the town the small town that uh, the story takes place in and so geographically this was a little difficult because I don't know if I just like take these things too seriously, but the whole flood thing, like it had to make, I, I basically had to think about where things are located in relation to each other and make sure that things are like plausible, logically, you know what I mean? And those, there were a lot of things in the script that I had to kind of decipher and solve if, if you know what I mean, because as a writer, you don't tend to think that far because visually you don't have to solve every inch of the issue like on paper you know what i mean you can just kind of if it makes sense in words it's one thing but having to show something visually kind of adds another layer layer of complexity i think so that's a lot of th that kind of stuff is something i actually had to think about which is which is why even in the sketch you can see how a little bit of this area here is elevated because i wanted to have flood here but have a little bit of uh mm, ground showing up here in some of the shots but anyways whatever i'm not gonna dive that much into detail so so basically, I didn't have a solid plan on how to do the thumbnails. So the first chapter, I actually thumbnailed in my sketchbook, which I managed to dig up. It's quite old. It's been at least like four or five years or something since this sketchbook. And there's like some some drawings of my characters and some Pikmin fan art because I was like obsessed with that game at the, at the time. And then... I just jumped right into it. So, the these are the, the thumbnails or storyboards, if you will, for the first chapter. So right away, one of the things that kind of went wrong when with these storyboards is like, okay, this is like a technicality, but a point of advice: when you're storyboarding for your comic. You have to decide on the ratio, like the the size of the page ahead of time. I don't know. This might be like super straightforward and like uh, obvious to a lot of people. I don't know if it is. It might be use even if it's useful to like one person. I might as well just mention it. But 
as you can see i didn't really think about it i mean you, you probably can't tell just by looking but i just guessed like the the size of the square is or rectangle is arbitrary so this isn't one-to-one -one ratio to what the pages were gonna look like and that's something i neglected to think about when i started storyboarding so it's really important to have the correct ratio because I, I ran into problems when I was doing layouts for these pages afterwards because as you can see in some of these in some of these pages I crammed a lot of panels horizontally so like here for instance you have one two three and then you have like this cluster of panels going on and this is one of this is like a panel heavy page but it's because I drew I arbitrarily drew a pretty wide page and I didn't didn't consider the actual dimensions at the time then when i started working when i had to make the psd file like the the template for the actual finished pages it had to be good to go in the com uh, correct resolution and i had to take things uh, uh, like you know the actual size of the book into account which was dictated by the publisher it was in the contract um the the dimensions of the book were in the contract so i went and did that when i was working on the layouts and then i realized that these are just too wide so then i was having a hell of a time like trying to reformat it to fit and it was a little difficult and so i learned a bunch of crucial first lessons when it came to storyboarding for comics when i was doing the first chapter so then when i was done with this as you can see like these are pretty small and the drawings are very like crude and i mean they worked for what i needed I, so I can actually show you. Okay, so I'll just take you through the drawings so you can see them kind of like one by one. So, I mean, they're pretty much like chicken scratch. I can, I can tell very easily what's going on and that was the whole point. So the whole point of these thumbnails essentially is to be able to tell what angle it is, like what type of shot, is it a close up? etc like that's the kind of basic stuff that you're deciding when you're thumbnailing um i like to capture the gist of the facial expression as well so that when i read through it i can kind of gauge like i can read through it just by looking i mean i'll come back to that a little bit later but essentially the point is comp like basic composition and to establish the angles and whatnot so that that's what i do right off the bat i know maybe some people approach it differently but i like to get that kind of stuff done in the thumbnailing stage and as you can see it's like super rough and obviously i had a hard time because i wasn't able to draw straight over this i had to essentially redraw it in photoshop afterwards so for chapter two i just said well for every single chapter following this i decided to storyboard it in photoshop which was an excellent decision and saved me a whole lot of time afterwards and you know what this process was really great like the first the first chapter took the longest i would say out of any of the other chapters just because i was figuring a lot of things out and i had to make sure to establish a very clear workflow and after i was able to do that it was pretty straightforward going f going forward <laughs> so yeah this is the rest of the, um, the first chapter storyboard and now i can show you guys what the layouts looked like and those i had to pretty much i printed them out because i uh, that's where i was reading through them to get the pacing to like get a feel for the pacing i mean i wasn't gonna go back and change much anyways but it the reason why i printed all this stuff out is because it immensely helped me be able to like really feel like gauge the amount of work that i've done when you don't have a pile of artwork stacked in front of you Sometimes it feels like you haven't done a lot. I don't know, it's hard to explain, but I feel like that a lot. So it's important for me to be able to have like a stack that I can like flip through and quantify in my in my hands so that I feel like I have actually accomplished something, if that makes any sense. So these are the layouts. And 
I printed them side by side as they would appear in the book. I believe this is, hold on, let me actually double check. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure this is how it ended up. Yes, so this is the first page that I didn't print out. And then, uh, I guess it would be pretty fun to see them. The final and the layout side by side, so. For instance, here you go, like. Yeah, it's pretty easy to see. Um, This is pretty close. I think I copy pasted this panel from a previous version of the pitch pages that I had to submit for, like, before I was officially brought into the project. Anyways, I mean, nobody cares about that. So, this is a side-by-side -side comparison. Ew, I don't know what that is on the page, but probably some sort of chocolate. <laughs> okay. So yeah, as you can see, like, the sketches are relatively resolved, but they're not, like, super detailed. And I obviously went into a lot more detail in the final pages, which was kind of a battle for me at first. I just cared too much, guys. I just freaking always care too much. And... <laughs> The ratio of hours spent versus money paid is absolutely abysmal here, but oh well. I'm not gonna talk about that much. So, yeah, I'm gonna go back to the... So these are the layouts. And as you can see, I went pretty easy on some of the backgrounds, which... I do not recommend this because when I was inking this later, I had to essentially go back and sketch all this crap in anyways. So it's best to just start with <laughs> as much information as you can, especially like for someone like me, I don't, this was the first time I was actually forced. Well, that would be a lie. It's not the first time I was forced to draw backgrounds. I had to draw a bunch of backgrounds for my graduation film. But besides that, backgrounds are not something I generally do a whole lot. And I don't find them like, difficult or anything they're they're not i mean what i what i mean by that is i don't have a ton of experience drawing backgrounds but when i do have to draw them it's not like the worst thing in the world if you know what i mean i do enjoy it so it's not it's not a big deal i'm pretty neutral towards them it's just usually i prefer to focus on characters so most of the stuff that i draw for fun has no background but this was a great experience and i honestly looking back at the stuff um like, for instance, this picture right here, I, I, I really like how it turned out. Um, where is it? There it is. And I think it's got a nice atmosphere. And atmosphere is something that I really, really care about and really enjoy trying to capture. And I think that backgrounds actually add a lot to it. And the fact that I don't draw any backgrounds is a shame. So, yeah. Mm, he, I was pretty much just... Still trying to establish a good way of making the layouts. Um, obviously, since I, did it, I, since I did it all in one go, like, oh my god, I actually have to show you guys what the layouts for the next chapter look like because this is decent. The second chapter layouts were super overworked. Like, I did not need to waste that time, that much time on them. And then I think afterwards I found some sort of good in between eventually but there's 12 chapters all together and in the first chapter it was not a bad start but certain pages like this one for instance bad this was a bad layout <laughs> it was fine but this isn't something as i discovered when i was inking this page this is a terrible sketch for inking on because look at the thickness of these lines they're like ridiculously thick and considering the fact that the actual ink lines are going to be much much thinner than that it's a ton of work to go over something like this because this gives you a good idea of what it feels like or like what the mood is or whatever and maybe the angle is correct maybe the proportions are fine but in terms of more more specific like what is this what is going on here this is super unresolved so i found out later that for like this is not a good sketch for me to work off of so i had to do another sketch on top of this essentially before i could get to inking and just to show you guys what the end result looked like for this page it's one of my favorite pages actually i think it turned out quite nice here you go so as you can see 
the the lines are pretty thin and I should have just like the level of detail is pretty high on a page like this and so you can see how this you don't even know what's going on here at all it's it's better to have a little more information in the sketch than this this mess right there so yeah so going forward I didn't do anything like that and I obviously used a much thinner thinner brush to sketch out the layouts and you can see that I indicate the shape the shadow or the lighting in some places where it's important and if I want to like remember what it's supposed to look like and such maybe it was kind of a waste of time because I could have remembered and anyways I mean like since the same brain does both um, steps of the process, like, I would assume I could make the same freaking decisions. But yeah, I was still kind of green back then and I needed to constantly waste my time on doing extra work that is completely unnecessary, so. But yeah, I don't know how long I've been recording this for and I guess I'll just show you guys what the second chapter looked like and why I was saying it's way too detailed. So let me show you the second chapter storyboards because I did not storyboard in my sketchbook again after this, which was an excellent decision. So these are the chapter two storyboards. And you know what? Looking back at this, I, I think eventually I found compromise between layouts and thumbnails to ensure that I, I waste as little time as I can. And for comparison, I guess I just wanted to show you guys what some of the later thumbnails look like. Maybe say chapter seven or six. Okay, here's chapter six. So as you can see there, it seems like there's a lot more I mean, there is a lot more visual information here, and these are not bad, they're fine, but essentially, I just wanted to show you how eventually I started being more careful about proportions. <laughs> I mean, maybe not but as much as I thought, but overall... That's just something that I started to take into into consideration a little more. So, yeah, the proportions of the face, like, obviously these are super simple drawings still. And some of these, some of these facial expressions are absolute gems. Like, look at that. God, that's hilarious. Ah. And then there's some pages like this where I really, really cared about this page. So I wanted to... I just couldn't wait. I couldn't even draw a crude thumbnail. I had to like make sure the mood was there even in the thumbnail. So yeah, and then this, this dude, the science, yeah. <laughs> you guys are probably thinking I'm like a crazy person looking at all these things, but it's it really kind of does bring a lot of memories, you know, it's been a while so worked, since I looked at this and yeah. And then you can see in some of these thumbnails, like. Those are pretty damn resolved, so perspective is something that I was definitely establishing in the thumbnail stage so I don't have to like break my brain trying to figure it out in the next stage. Oh yeah, and I obviously stopped doing the tones because ugh, honestly putting tones on this page was the stupidest thing. Like I could have easily done that way later because I already had it pictured pretty well and I was gonna remember it anyways but it's just, it's just extra work like all of this is hours upon hours of stuff that was unnecessarily and did not really need to be done so yeah I'm just gonna put this back in here and I'm gonna show you guys what I meant by I overworked the layouts for the second chapter <laughs> oh my god let me see if I can find it Oh yeah, and I actually did a couple of other things, like, absolutely obsessed with printing things out, as you can see. I printed out all the brushes, like the cheat, the brush cheat sheets that came with the Kyle's Mega Pack brush that I bought, brush set that I bought for Photoshop. And when I was, um, 
I was just, I printed these out and I looked at them and I circled the ones that I thought were good. I mean, I don't even, oh yeah, yeah, the wet blender. I use this a lot and this is, an, this is a beautiful effect. And you know what? It does not look like this anymore in Photoshop. And I'm pissed about that because I don't know what they changed exactly, but at some point I'm going to have to sit down and figure out how to make it look like this again because something has changed. But anyways, I use that a lot. And all the stuff that I did was kind of like within the first couple of pages when I was still establishing my workflow. And so I picked some textures that I was that I wanted to use um, going forward. So anyways, let's see. Uh, I think this should be, um, let me see if I can find a second. Yeah, oh my God, there it is. There it is in all its overworked glory. Okay, so this is the second chapter and <laughs> At first, this is fine. That's not overworked. And then it starts to get out of control right about here. Like, see this right here? There's multiple levels of tone. Like, my God. So unnecessary. <laughs> so, and it just kept getting worse. So, like this? That's way too much work for a sketch. Jesus. I could have made it so much simpler and saved myself so much time. But I was still at a stage where I was pretty happy and it's it was only the second chapter. My uh, my resolve and my ability to work was not shot at this point, which is why I just kept putting in way more work than I should have. So yeah, there you go. These are overworked 100% and just to let you guys see what the pages looked like for instance this like <laughs> I even went and blurred the background can you believe that like what is the point of doing that for the layout Jesus Christ I knew I was gonna do it for the final page anyways here is the side-by-side -side comparison mm. And one of the things that drives me absolutely nuts is that I didn't have control over the printing and I just like a lot. Most of this book is too dark and it drives me crazy that I wasn't able to tweak anything before it went to print. And yeah, it's it's it hurts to be a control freak, you guys. Oh, I guess this was like separated. Anyways, so... This is that page. And yeah, as you can see, like, it doesn't look that different. And I could have saved a lot of time if I didn't uh, <laughs> waste. Anyways, I feel like I've already repeated that like 10 times. So I'm just going to stop talking about it. Yeah. And at this point in a comic, I was treating backgrounds as like a separate element because I didn't quite figure out how to do those yet. But... As you can see, the way that I approach backgrounds has changed quite a bit um, in future pages. Anyways, I mean, I don't really know where to end this video at this point, but I guess that's the gist of my process. And I would love to talk more about it, but I have no idea what to tell you guys about exactly. So. I would really appreciate it if you could leave me some comments and just let me know what kind of stuff you'd like me to tell you about in depth because I can definitely recall a lot of my thoughts <laughs> and the things that I did wrong and things that I did right eventually. So yeah, just you guys let me know what you want me to tell you about. Oh my god, this is so funny. I used to draw it when I was still um, excited about the project. I used to draw these little comics after uh the end of a chapter and yeah it's kind of sad to look back at i mean the whole thing got so so messed up after about a year and a half or so or maybe like a year but uh, at least i enjoyed i enjoyed it a lot in the beginning <laughs> 
but anyways so yeah i'm gonna leave a link in the description um where you can purchase these and there's actually a russian edition as well a russian translation which is super cool except for the fact that they spelled my freaking name wrong and the irony is that i'm russian so i just i don't even know what happened there i'm not gonna talk about it <laughs> but i i'm hoping to get my hands on a copy of a russian book at some point because that's pretty neat but i think it's also supposed to come out on french i don't know if covid affected that at all but i mean as far as i know it should still happen i should probably ask the publisher slash editor whoever about it but yeah I'll, I'll link down below where you can get yourself a copy if you're interested in reading it and yeah thank you for watching this video and like i said please let me know if there's any other aspects of the process that you wanted me to talk about in the future so all right bye guys